So just as predicted, Russia took a lot from Qing, uh, and they are clearly the only global power here. So obviously, this is really, really bad. Uh, I cannot wait to see the results of what is going to happen to Russia uh, at this point. I mean, uh, they are powerful. They are really, really powerful. And Qing is weaker than ever before. Uh, now, they still are at war with the, with the British. They could still gang some land here in British Bengal. Uh, and actually, actually, it's pretty likely that they will. We, we will see. Um, but, uh, I, I, oh man, I don't know. I mean, this is going to be an interesting campaign because we've never had like just one dominant superpower like this. Uh, so I'm excited to see exactly what's going to happen there. Uh, we have Punjab here also. Like We talked about how possibly Punjab or Persia could maybe unite and uh, maybe stand, maybe be a force in the Middle East that the Russians will have to feel threatened by. Uh, but we'll see about that. Persia did take over all of uh, Bhutan, and they, or Bhutan, B Bhutan, and uh, the Iraqis will probably get taken over, or the UAE will get taken over by Persia next. Uh, Egypt did take over Ethiopia. That happened a while ago, though, but I don't think I made a comment about that. I, I apologize. I totally didn't even realize it. Uh, and Egypt, oh, obviously, uh, Portuguese Angola did not gain, gain their independence, uh, but that was about it. Actually, looks like, did Belgium lose provinces? This seems like a little bit smaller than before. Or maybe Portuguese Angola is look, just looking stronger. Portuguese uh, Mozambique, Mozambique and Portuguese Angola. Maybe they're just looking bigger or something like that. Their font is looking nicer. Uh, as of wars right now, there aren't too many. Finally, we've got a nice time for to just to relax. Uh, Brazil is at war with Argentina, which is a big deal. Uh, that is quite a big deal. Serbia and Bosnia going at it. Uh, and then, yeah, I guess Ching is still at war with the British, which is still something to be... Taking note of, ooh, okay, so actually Latin America is having kind of a continental war right now. We've got Brazil going to the south to try to attack Argentina, which would be a very smart strategical pickup by both Chile and Brazil to stop Peru from uniting uh, Peruvian La Plata, as well as Peru is attacking Central America, finally for the first time, which is going to make things interesting because if Peru begins to move up towards Mexico, uh, what is that going to do for their friendship? Now, I believe they do somewhat like each other here. Yes, they do. Uh, I mean, it's, yeah, they like each other. They, for the most part, like each other. But if they take over province, ooh, actually, UPCA is doing pretty good. Now, are they playing defensive? Yeah, look at that. Peru actually got sent back. Wow, all right. Well, good for uh, the UPCA. Good for them. Anyways, let's watch over Brazil take over Argentina. I think that they should have a lot of success here, obviously. How is Paraguay still alive? I have no idea. Um, they should obviously have quite a bit of success Brazil's moving into northern Argentina, and then you have Chile uh, already along the western coast of Argentina with a 30 stack. So, yes, they will dominate here, and more than likely, I mean, it depends. I want to see who, what, what land is being given and who gets more of the land here. Will it be Brazil or Chile? I'm guessing it'll be Brazil. Um, Chile, do you have any claims on these lands? No, you don't. So they both don't have any claims, no cores or anything like that. I guess it could be a toss-up for anybody. Um, but Brazil desperately needs this. Brazil also needs the UPCA to win this war, which they probably will not now that the 54 stack is here. Oh, yeah, you just got crushed. Yes. I mean, the three-star general helps, but uh, it's not going to help when you're fighting an army double your size. Oh, did you just get crushed? No. No, they're, they're behind the 47 stack, I'm thinking. Or maybe they did. Did they? Oh, no way. Is there a technology difference between these two nations? No, they're both westernized. Western, Western. Okay, just making sure. I was about to lose my mind right there. I, 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 I thought the UPCA was Western the entire time, but I guess not. Um, still, I mean, uh, so there's a few things that need to happen for Russia to, to, to stop. You know what I mean? For, for nations to stop Russia. First of all, you know, this, their alliances need to be broken apart. People need to stop allying to Russia. I get why they're doing it. That's the way I play EU4. I find the biggest, baddest country and I ally them. Um, also, Egypt's looking very good. Their colonization, and they've been expanding in the sub-Saharan sub region into these uh, tribal locations. Ooh, there has been a few nations or a few tribes that have kind of uh, blobbed out, which is good. It might be able to stop the USA a little bit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, people need to stop being allied to, to Russia. That's for one. Uh, that's like the first thing that needs to happen. Second of all, second, ooh. Okay, so I don't really know if these rebels are... Uh, these are reaction revolutionaries, particularists, revolutionaries. Uh, maybe. 
Well, I don't know. We'll see. Austria is going in here and actually helping out quite a bit with a 72 stack. Okay, so that's that's one thing that needs to happen. Austria needs to grow some balls and and they need to uh, they need to fight back. Austria needs to ally to Prussia, which I don't believe they like each other. Yeah, they're they're rivaled, which isn't super surprising. Actually, most of the world hates Prussia, which isn't good, except for Tuscany for some reason. I don't know how Tuscany got on the uh, the good side of Prussia. Uh, yes, Tuscany, Austria, and Prussia. Those that's actually a really strong alliance. I don't know why Naples isn't destroyed yet. And look at that. Revolutionary France have ganged back their lands that the Swiss had taken away previously. Switzerland is back to, I think, their original provinces. Maybe they are at well, maybe one extra. No, they they have they start with Vaud, right? Vaud? I, I, I don't remember. And Burgundy is still trapped inside of the middle of French territory. Uh, more than likely, they'll get taken over. But Revolutionary France needs quite a bit of time to recover. They certainly do. French pretender rebels. This is the first time in a long time. Ooh, Swedish separatists. So those are the big ones that you really need to worry about are the separatists. The revolutionaries don't end up, they don't always have like the most luck, uh, you know, causing their whatever their purpose is. Revolutionaries don't, oh my gosh. Okay, so this is, this is good for the most part. Oh, wow. Okay, but the thing is though, with the Russian alliances, they might be able to stop this. Ching separatists already. Yeah, I mean, Russia, you might have taken a bit too much. Now, where are the, where's the liberty desire of their colony? Now, that would be another really good result here is if we see their colony gain independence or at least declare an independent war while they're fighting all these rebels. Uh, that'll even if their colony doesn't gain the independence, that would at least um, that would at least distract the regiments from going after the rebels. Because honestly, the rebels are a way bigger deal. You know, who cares if the colony gets independence or not? Um, but they should. The problem is, again, there is nobody supporting the independence of this colony. So obviously they'd never be able to face up to the Russians, as well as the Russians do have the strongest fleet in the world. So this is pretty crazy. Ooh, Mongol separatists. Maybe the Mongolians are going to form up. Who knows? Uh, so far, it does seem like most of the Russian regiments are out in the eastern part of the Russian Empire, which means that the separatists that are forming up uh, in the western half, it, I mean, they're going to have a lot more time, a lot more provinces to occupy. Uh, they might be looking pretty good. Yeah, there are like no regiments here. There are 54, 59 sack of Austrians, but they can only wipe out a, a handful of these rebels. They will not be able to do them all entirely. They won't be able to take them all down entirely. So the Swedish separatists would be, that would be really, really good if they were to uh, to separate, obviously, because Sweden would be back. Um, although those lands aren't super valuable, I should say. I think the Qing separatists are probably the most, uh, pose the biggest threat. I mean, obviously, if Qing can gang back their lands, that would be good. Russia would still be very powerful. Oh, man, oh, man. This is the first time we've ever had to see, uh, in this campaign at least, uh, and AI have to deal with the fact that they took way too much. Yeah, so th that's a pretty huge stack, 80 stack and a 70 stack, as well as I'm guessing these guys are as well. No, these are these are Mongol separatists. They'll more than likely get taken out, though. And Ching is just watching here. Watching here, they're probably in hatred. I wonder what Japan feels towards uh, towards Russia. So Japan doesn't like Ching, so they are kind of like, I, I guess. Uh, Russia's got a high opinion of Russia. Uh, Russia's got a high opinion of Japan, uh, not the other way around. The Japanese opinion of Russia is not very good at all. Mongol separatists. Now, where is a majority of the Russian military? I mean, I see a huge, a, a couple stacks. Are they are they here? No, this is strictly Austria's regiments. Oh, are they? I think like they're almost leaving. No, they're doing the smart thing and they're going after an 18th stack, which is pretty smart of them. Yeah, they're kind of screwed when it comes to these Swedish separatists. They can't help out that much, but, uh, you know, Austria could maybe put their neck out here on the line, which would be a bad idea for Austria's sake. I mean, do they border a lot of people that, yeah, I mean, Prussia could try to uh, maybe make something happen here. They could maybe try to make something happen. Prussia needs to do something. Prussia needs to form Germany at the very least. Okay, so here comes Austria. That's a start. They're going to be taking out some particularists, which is fine. I mean, what the, they weren't really going to do much anyways. Um, ooh, they just took a stack out of, of Russian regiments. So we could see revolutionary Russia, which I think I've been talking about. I'd really, I'd really like to see. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's, how much they need to take over. I know that if Moscow falls, if the capital province falls, then that would be 
pretty big deal. Uh, but nobody is even close to uh, the capital province. Is it Novgorod? Or is there, wait, is there a Muscovy province? There probably is. I'm just skipping over it. Ah, it's, it's uh, Neva. Is that something that starts off in the Victoria, in the Victoria era timeline? Was this formerly the capital of Russia? I'm not, I, I'm not exactly sure at all. But anyways, these three, the Swedish separatists are, are doing a good job. Let's go and check on wars. I know that I've been focusing on these rebels that, uh, that Russia ha is seeing right now, but it is kind of important that we look all around, I guess. Actually, the world's been pretty peaceful. I think most of the world's doing what we're doing is just seeing what's going to happen to Russia here. See, if, if Russia has any rivals, this is the time to attack, man. This is the time to attack. It's 1891. Oh, the rebels are now taking each other out. Uh, now, who won that? Revolutionaries. Okay, so that's actually okay. The particularists uh, won't do much as it is. But that really, really helps out Russia. So here, here they come with a 52 stack. Maybe a bit more. Oh, yeah, they're, they're really they're, they're starting to clean up now. Uh, these are also Russian revolutionaries. Uh, this The AI is doing a pretty good job. I think they're going to be able to grasp a hold on this if they just divide and conquer. The thing is, though, they're going to lose a lot of manpower in the process. Uh, that's the thing to keep in mind. And how are the Qing separatists doing? Now, that's also pretty important as they're fine, as well as some Korean separatists that formed up. Uh, I don't want to make any predictions just yet, but I, I want to say that they will for sure lose something here. I don't know what exactly, but it seems like they're going to lose a lot. Let's see if they win this battle. I guess even if they don't, it doesn't matter. Russia was smart. They attacked with no offensive penalty, and they will win. Yes. Their general helped them out actually quite a bit. But now they got to run from the 53 stack that's coming, uh, coming ahead. They also need to begin to unoccupy all this territory. They can't leave it alone. Has the forts increased? No, there's still not really many forts in the campaign. Uh, I, actually, you know what? There, there's a bit more than I remember. I think when we started off, there was nothing. The AI, I think, has been building forts. I, Not 100% about that. It seems like they've been building a, a bit more forts. There's no way they're going to be able to stop all of these guys before something pops out. At least the separatists, you know. The, the separatists will, will pop. See, I mean, they're, the more than likely they'll stop the revolutionaries and the, and the particularists. Those will probably not stand for too long. Uh, the thing are the corners, the Swedish separatists, the Qing separatists, the Korean separatists, the Mongolian separatists. Uh, those are the big problems. But, you know, I mean, that, th those weren't lands that they started off with anyways. I mean, Russia's still going to be powerful with their core Russian provinces. So it, this isn't really that big of a deal for them. If these Swedish, uh, yeah, see, they're, they're destroying each other right now. Kind of. While Russia is gaining back manpower and unoccupying all this stuff. I wish there was a progress bar that everybody can see. That would be nice. Sicily going after Tripoli. When did Tripoli form up or, or break out? What was that? Oh, and Naples is also at war with them, so there seems to be a race. Oh, wait, never mind. They've been here for a while. I don't know why I, I didn't recognize their flag. So we have uh, Sicily and Naples going after Sicily. Or, uh, I'm sorry, Tripoli. Too many E's. Too many E's. It's, it gets confusing. <laughs> um... So this could be a, a good t opportunity for Naples to gain a, a bit more land. I mean, who are they allied to? They're allied to Peru. That's a pretty smart choice of them. Actually, let's check in on Latin America. They took quite a bit away from Argentina, but not, not enough. They could have taken a lot more. Chile also didn't take anything. And what about the UPCA? Did they survive? Incredibly, somehow they did. Supporting independence oh, of the uh, Spanish Caribbean colony. For some reason, Brazil also didn't take away these colonies, uh, I'm sorry, this, these provinces from Great Britain in North South America. All right, so yeah, nothing really happened in Latin America. I really thought that was going to be the big war to really change the borders and and maybe gang some, I guess, be more of a threat between Brazil and uh, Peru. Brazil gained a bit more power, but not enough. All right, so there's still big stacks left. Um, the thing is, though, Russia's ganging back power. Slowly, ganging back uh, manpower. We should probably check on that. Ooh, yeah. See, this this whole side is kind of screwed, though. I think they will lose this stuff. Let's go ahead and double check. Ooh, and the USA are back at war with who? Messina? Let's go and check on their military power, and I just want to look at their, their manpower overall. Do they have anything? 
Canada, USA, how low is Russia? Russia has lost quite a bit. Well, actually, you know, if we just go to force them, we'll be able to find them. Manpower, they're at 17,000. Not terrible. They're still okay, and they actually have a pretty large force still. So it's not too bad. They also have hired a bunch of mercenaries, which was a smart choice by the AI as well. So I'm thinking the eastern part of Russia will be lost first as they clean up this region. Yeah, they're going to destroy these revolutionaries. So it looks like we will not see revolutionary Russia just yet. It's, it's less likely. Let's go and check on the USA and see exactly where they're planning or intending to expand their borders. Oh, that's very easy for them. So they're going to be able to pick up Messina pretty easily. And they kind of need to as Morocco continues to gain more strength. And they actually became a, a major sort of player uh, in terms of in terms of like sub-Saharan tribes and taking them over and stuff like that. Obviously, Portugal still controls a pretty huge trunk, chunk in Central Africa. Let's go ahead and get back to the uh, the current war screen. Yeah, Qing was never able to do enough to the British to get enough war score. That's unfortunate. Really thought they'd be able to do something. Well, part of the problem is that they're also at war with another uh, Asian nation. And they have most of the occupations. So they might be able to take over a bit here. Ooh, actually, Qing's dealing with some... Uh, some Russian revo uh, revolutionaries. Why Why do you have Russian revolutionaries? Uh, that's strange. I guess they're crossing the border or something. Or maybe they're not They're not sieging out provinces in Qing territory. They're just trying to get towards this part. Oh, that's what they're doing. Which actually kind of hurts the separatists somewhat. That does hurt the separatists somewhat. Yeah, I mean, I. again, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen with Russia. Uh, it could be... I, I don't know. I think I, I want to say they're going to lose at least one country or at least a few provinces to a country. I mean, that seems likely, right? I don't think that's that's too much, uh, too much of a prediction for the most part. Ooh, Iraq is uh, at war with Egypt's BAM. Yes. All right. So very uh, smart pickup for Egypt here. Egypt seems to be uh, kind of the nation most dominated in Africa, even out of the... Uh, I don't know how Egypt is doing compared to Great Britain. They might be okay. Because remember, anybody can take it. Take this. Actually, you know what? The USA could, uh, I think, is actually dominating the most in Africa. We'll have to see about that. That that's, that is going to be an interesting uh, sort of prediction and how we decide the, the winner here. Because I, I figured it'd be like this. Uh, I don't know. Because an outside power like that, I, I just I don't know. Uh, and Messina has been, oh, Messina hasn't been destroyed just yet. Why are they leaving these reactionaries alone? Uh, oh, here here come some troops. Uh, but they're not moving. Hmm. Well, never mind. I guess they're not going to come. Uh, anyways, guys, looks like I'm going to have to stop right there, though. Morocco is also at war with Messina. But for, oh, I guess... I don't know why everyone's at war with Messina. Is there a specific war that was declared? No, just everybody's after them. But no one's willing to destroy their rebels, I guess, for some reason. I don't know why... I don't know what's up with that. Well, Morocco will do it. No, they're just staying there too. I guess not. Oh, it's going to be the tribe. That's funny. Oh, now Morocco's going in after them. Well, the tribe's going to get probably taken out by uh, the USA at some point anyways. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, I'm going to stop right there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time when we find out what happens to the massive revolts that are occurring in southern Russia.